for the women that we sort of have at Made to Thrive, we do a lot of corporate uh, executive work, CEOs, small, medium enterprises. They just keep on telling me, I've got kids, I've got to take them to school. Uh, I've got a lot of pressure. I've got to make it work. When can I exercise? Uh, you know, they don't have the time to prepare their meals. So that's why I say you're quite an inspiration because you've got three small little girls and you've got a career. So take us through number one, your exercise or movement regime, including even things like steps, you know, how important you think daily steps are, but give us an overall view on health and wellness with regards to exercise. Well, the most important thing I'm going to say is that if there's a mom listening that's got kids and a career and things like that, for years of my life, it was, you know, my kids and my family and my career, and I have to be at work at this time and come home at this time. And because I didn't take care of myself, I felt like crap. So any extra time I had, the last thing I wanted to do, you know, was go exercise. And if you don't enjoy something, let me tell you right now, you might stick with it for a short period of time, but you're not going to stick with it long term. Okay. So the way that I view the gym and that I view exercise, because I'm going to tell you right now, I don't always feel like getting up at 5 a.m. and going to the gym. I don't. But how I view it is that it is the most important thing for me to do that day. I call it paying yourself first. It comes before work. It comes before I'm up getting the kids ready for school. It happens at 5 a.m. That's why it's the first thing of the day. But I also see it as an opportunity to get better at hard things. I think there's benefits to your muscles and growing muscles and cardiovascular benefits to exercise, but I think there's a level of mental resilience that comes through doing hard things like trying to lift heavy weights. And, you know, when do you quit? When do you throw in the towel? How do you push through it? How do you show up when you don't want to be there? Yeah. So that's, that's kind of really honestly the biggest take home that I can give anybody listening right now. And I'm sorry, um, I'm going to jump in there because that's so important. Michael Easter's book called The Comfort Crisis. I don't know if you've read it, but I think you should interview him on your podcast. Talks exactly about this whole process of doing these things out of comfort. You know, he talks about this thing of going out and doing something really, really hard. It builds resilience. It builds something physically, emotionally, and mentally. So it'd be a really, he's got an incredible book. His audio book is brilliant, but I wanted to just drop that in. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, but my training has, has evolved through the years, just like my diet. So I used to, uh, you guys can't see it cause my background is blurred out, but there's this like weightlifting trophy over my left shoulder. I was a two-time lifter of the year at Nebraska. So we're talking kind of your normal Olympic lifts so squatting, benching, hang clean, those types of things. When I went to medical school, I did a little stint of P90X and I was like, you know, hitting the weights, but I really started to transition to just like a lot of cardio. I was doing the elliptical machine. Um, after my second daughter was born, I was like, oh, I got to get this baby weight off. I think I'm going to sign up for a half marathon. So I was just running, running a half an hour, hour up to like two hours at a time to train for this half marathon. And I look back now at the pictures and like... Um, my body composition, I'm still very fluffy, right? And I'm like running half marathons. And then after my third daughter was born, um, I was doing like some kickboxing and some pure bar classes, but like I had really almost kind of vowed when I left college that I wasn't going to lift again. And a lot of it, I know a woman listening right now will resonate that as I was a young girl growing up in the eighties and nineties, the the society, the cultural, you know, kind of view on women was that women, first of all, I call it like cocaine model chic, like it was very skinny, um, no muscle, like that was like feminine beauty. And so I was always navigating as an athlete, like that I didn't fit in, like my legs are too big. I don't want to look too big. I don't want to look too bulky, like what every woman says, like when somebody tells them to start mm. lifting weights. So I had really like on purpose, stayed away from weights for a really long time. And then after I got my diet back in a good place, I had a come to Jesus with myself that I really need to start lifting again. And so in 2018 was when I got back into lifting weights more regularly. And I was doing a lot of hit back then. And now I've really realized that we're overdoing a lot of the high intensity things like true hit, like true sprint training should be done for like a very short amount of time. But I was going to a gym where they had these like hour long hit sessions. And I mean, I was going hard for an hour. Um, and I realized that that just wasn't sustainable. Like I want to live a really long time. So my training now I lift really heavy on Mondays. So, um, 
And then on Tuesdays, I do a little bit more accessory uh, type movements. Wednesdays, um, I do a little bit more recovery. And then on Thursdays, I do heavy again, so full body, but I'm back to like, you know, hex bar deadlifts. And I'm trying to do lifting techniques that reduce risk of injury. Like I don't want to get injured. Like I'm a lot of people ask me if I do CrossFit and I don't, and I'm just, I'm a surgeon. So like, I can't tear a shoulder. I can't like my profession. I, I can't get disabled. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, so I am cautious in that I'm cautious in that regard, but, um, but I do some sprinting. Um, I try new things. I added kettlebells this last year to try to kind of, you know, change things up because we do kind of get bored, you know, after a period of time. And so I'm always trying to kind of find new things, but I do dedicated weight training, um, four times a week. And, but I also have prioritized recovery 